If you're dealing with osteoarthritis, tendon injuries, or joint pain, you've probably heard of PRP and PRF. However, which one is better for the treatment of sport medicine conditions? In this video, I'm gonna break down the key differences, the key similarities, the mechanism of action, and which treatment may be right for you. If you're interested in regenerative treatments, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Sonam and I'm an interventional sport medicine doctor. Let's review the key differences between PRP and PRF. So what is PRP and PRF? PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma and PRF stands for platelet-rich fibrin. PRF is actually also referred to second generation PRP. Both are derived from a patient's own blood and uses the body's own healing factors to help stimulate healing in tendon, ligament, and joint injuries. So what is the main similarity between PRP and PRF? The main similarity is that it comes from your own blood. So it helps stimulate your own body's healing response using your own blood product. Both are rich in platelets and growth factors, and platelets are thought to be the key molecule required to help stimulate a healing response. In tendons, it helps stimulate tenocyte proliferation and collagen gene expression, helping to stimulate tendon repair. In joints, PRP tends to have an anti-inflammatory response, and it is seen at reducing the effects of catabolic enzymes, such as MMP13, which is known to break down cartilage, as well as promoting hyaluronic acid production by synovial sites. For those who don't know, hyaluronic acid is a key molecule required for a healthy joint environment. So both PRP and PRF provide these growth factors to help stimulate these positive responses in both tendon and joint pathologies. Now, what are the key differences between PRP and PRF? The key differences are gonna be outlined and summarized in this table below, but let's go through each one step by step. The first main difference is the spin speed of the product. PRP is made by spinning your blood product at a high spin speed for a longer period of time. PRF, however, is spun at a lower spin speed for a lower period of time. This is important mainly because PRP will actually require the use of anticoagulation due to the fact that the blood is being spun for a longer period of time, whereas PRF can be spun for a shorter period of time and used quickly thereafter, so we're not worried about adding an anticoagulant agent. This is important because theoretically, PRF is going to be the most natural form of treatment that you can receive as there are no additives to this product, whereas with PRP, we will commonly add sodium citrate to help prevent clotting. Now, I just wanted to note there are a few different formulations of PRF or platelet-rich fibrin. One is a solid form and one is a liquid form. For our intents and purposes, we are gonna be talking about the liquid PRF as that is used very comparably to PRP in orthopedic injuries. The second difference between the two is a fibrin scaffold. PRP is spun so fast that all you get are a high concentration of platelets, whereas with PRF, the low spin speed allows you to retain a fibrin matrix in the final product. This is gonna be very important because this can help deliver growth factors to the area very slowly, whereas PRP's growth factors will be delivered and dispersed quite quickly. For those who don't know, fibrin is a scaffold. So when you cut yourself and you are trying to scab over, that scab is created with fibrin. So theoretically, if you have fibrin in your end product, you can actually hold on to the growth factors in that area for a longer period of time. Versus with PRP, if there's no fibrin in that, those growth factors will be metabolized and spread away from the area that they were injected very quickly. The third main difference is the cell composition. So this is arguably the biggest difference between the two in addition to the inclusion of this fibrin matrix. The cell composition of PRP is high concentration of platelets and a low concentration of white blood cells. Whereas with PRF, you have a high concentration of platelets, albeit maybe less concentrated than PRP, as well as a high concentration of white blood cells. PRF's leukocyte-rich nature composes of neutrophils, monocytes, lymphocytes, and more. And what they do is they secrete cytokines to help create an antimicrobial response and also improve healing at the site of the injection. This key difference and the addition of white blood cells allows PRF to also work from an immune cell effect. PRP tends to be leukocyte poor, which has very few white blood cells and focuses purely on platelet-derived factors. The last main difference is the growth factor released. We spoke about this when it came to the fibrin clot, but essentially because PRF has a fibrin clot in the final product, the growth factors will release, release over a slower period of time. Think about 
in extended release medication. Whereas with PRP, you're getting a high concentration of platelets and growth factors, but they will be dispersed from the area very quickly because there is no fibrin matrix to hold it in place. Now, when it comes to what these two products are best used for, their uses are overlapping. So PRP and PRF can be used for orthopedic and sport medicine injuries, but mainly PRF's claim to fame was actually in the use of dental implants. So they would actually provide a fibrin clot-like product and put it into the implant hole before putting in the bone graft or the tooth implant. In summary, PRP gives you a quick, fast, high concentration boost of healing factors, whereas PRF offers a slow time-controlled release of these growth factors. Many of you may be asking, is this clinically relevant or different? This is an important question and one that's still being researched in the literature right now. If you do a literature review on the effects of PRP and joint arthritis, you will see a number of meta-analyses and, and research articles. However, if you look at the effects of PRF on orthopedic injuries, the research is quite sparse and it's mainly because this is a new field. So we are on the cusp of thinking about new discoveries and advances to treatments. Both PRP and PRF are synonymous for similar uses. So treatment of tendon, ligament, and joint issues. But the thought is that PRF may be the better option long-term because of the slower release of growth factors. In my practice, I use both PRP and PRF. And I am actually very excited about the potential use cases for PRF in the future, given the fact that it includes platelets, white blood cells, and a fibrin matrix. Anecdotally, my patients who've been treated with PRF have had amazing responses, typically in joints, because I find that that fibrin matrix helps allow hold the growth factors in the area for a longer period of time. Now, like I said, this is still an experimental treatment that is starting to become more and more popularized within the sports medicine field. As we start learning more about it, you will see it used more and more. I hope this helped you understand the differences between PRP and PRF. If you found this video useful, please like and leave a comment down below. Have you had one of these therapies before? If so, let us know and let us know how your response was. If you want to learn more about my PRP injection protocols, I will leave a link down below. For now, that's all.